Hello everybody, so I'm Praveen Shekram and I thought today I'll take some time off to talk about some pathways to UK in the surgical aspect and especially for an international medical graduate coming from India. So before we begin, I would just like to say a few words about the NHS, that is the National Health Service. I'm sure all of you would have heard about this. So whenever any international medical graduate is coming to UK for the first time, he or she will be placed and work a job in the National Health Service. So this is a basically a public health service. It's under the government administration. A couple of terms that you need to know about is a trust or a deanery. So trust is the one that uh, as graduates, you will be coming into contact the most often. So you can just imagine that a trust is nothing but a group of hospitals who are providing services. So there might be multiple trust inside a single county or even a single trust. And a lot of services are duplicated or may not be available in a single hospital. So it's like a group of hospitals that together provide the healthcare services. So when you're talking about deanery, it is something uh, similar to university back home. So it is mainly in charge of medical training. So uh, all the hospitals that come under the deanery, these are the places where the training candidates will be placed to undergo their training. So when you're talking about NHS, you also need to know about the terms. So there are different terms by which doctors are known here. And for convenience sake, we usually divide them into junior, senior and the middle grade doctors. Okay, so the senior grade is obviously going to be your consultants. And we're talking about junior grade. These are your F1 and F2 basically means foundation year. So these are equal to your interns. And then you talk about the SHO or a core training, a CT. So these are more at the level of your MS graduates, MS general surgery trainees. Yes, so they have certain uh, experience in your surgical branch as well. And then comes the middle grade doctor. So these are people who have chosen the specialty and are experienced in the said specialty as such. So these can be doctors, uh, if, you to, if you want to equate it from back home, these are the doctors who have finished their MS general surgery and are coming over to train in the UK. So certain the terms that you need to know here are your ST, that is nothing but a specialty training. SPR is your specialty registrar. And SAS grade doctors are your specialist, associate specialist, and your specialty doctors. So we will go into detail about each of them in the next couple of slides. So when you're talking about NHS, there are basically two pathways. Okay, so one is your normal training pathway. So this is the pathway that is a deanery established uh, course. So and it is to talk to it is thought to be the best way to a consultant post. Okay, so these are specific to a deanery, and this entry into this pathway involves an application process which uh, which happens once a year and most of the trainees are usually rotated among hospitals inside the same trust or even among different trusts as well so basically it is all done within a deanery so if you take the normal training pathway so if you see here this flow chart here so every medical medical student finishes their med school following which they apply for your uh, internship training that is your f1 and f2 and following which they have to decide which pathway are they going to take. So they, it can be surgery, it can be general practice, or even it can be other specialties as well. So when you're talking about surgery, so if you see here, I've taken a break, I've put in a break here. So that basically means that after you complete your internship, that's your F1 and F2 years, you are basically out of the training pathway, after which you have to get your application ready and apply to enter training at this area. Okay, at this level, I'm sorry. So when you're talking about CT1, CT2, these are also called as your ST1 and ST2. Okay, so core training is basically equivalent to your basic surgical training. It is, it is considered equal to the MS course that we have back home. And ever since last year, uh, there has been a new you know, hurdle in, in when you're talking about surgical training. So this is your MSRA exam. So any person after they finish their F2, now they are required to complete their MSRA exams before they can apply for CT1 and CT2 post. Okay, and after they complete this two years of core training, again they are out of the system, so hence the break there. After which they go through the exact same process again an application process, a practical aspect of interview, and a proper interview before they get selected into the 
training pathway for specialty training and these for the surgery it usually lasts five to six years from st3 to st8 following which they get the degree that is your cct so that degree tells you that you're a consultant of course times are changing and now a pro uh, merely a cct degree is no longer enough and most of these consultants do go for a post cct fellowship as well okay so then when you're talking about the exact equivalent pathway is your non-training pathway okay so in this what does it mean is basically that this is this training this pathway does not follow a course does not follow a set curriculum or a syllabus okay so this is usually the job that we as international medical graduate initially get offered so this is offered by the specific trust as compared to the training pathway which is actually conducted by the deanery so in this it uh, if you see similar job description to training candidate so basically means that you will be doing the exact same job as the training candidate but you might not be in the training pathway and as compared to your training pathway you will not have any dedicated supervisors uh, whereas if you see the training pathway you will have an educational and clinical supervisors who will make sure that you complete your competencies required okay and the length of the job always usually depends on the contract so in this again there are entry at multiple levels it depends on what degree you have completed back home or what exam that you have completed or the level of training that you had the level of experience that you have a lot of things goes into deciding at which level do you enter so, but for convenience sake, you just need to remember that both the training and non-training pathway are the same, just that one comes with a course, another does not come with a course, okay? So before we go on to the next levels of entry, you should know that a GMC registration is an absolute must when you're applying for jobs. Okay, so there are different ways to get a GMC, a GMC registration. So the most common ways are completing your PLAB and your MRCS or FRCS exams. So again, to write those exams, you need to be at a specific level of training. So all of that plays a role into determining what level of jobs you get placed into when you come to the UK. So as you can see, there are three levels of entry, I would say, for international medical graduates. So one is post MBBS, another is post MS general surgery, and the last is your post MCH. So let's see what are all the opportunities available. And remember one thing is that of all the Indian degrees, only MBBS is recognized in the UK. So no matter how many degrees you have after that, it is only considered as years of experience in that particular specialty and not as a proper board certified course, right? So when you're talking about post MBBS, so there are two routes that a graduate can take. So one is the PLAB route and another is the MRCS route. A lot of options are there. Okay, and most of it depends on the level of experience that you have. So as you can see, the jobs available at this level are your foundation year level jobs, your senior house officer, that is equivalent to your CT1, CT2, and your clinical fellow or junior clinical fellow as it's called. So again, all of that is within that CT1 and CT2. So when you're talking about levels of experience, if you have just come fresh out of medical school, but you have completed PLAP, the most likely job that will be waiting for you is your F1 level jobs. F2 level requires a little bit more experience than that. So if you do have a couple of months or one year experience in uh, working in a hospital, even among various departments, you can apply for your F2 level jobs. But make sure that the years of experience or the amount of experience is always less than 18 months. Because once you cross 18 months of surgical experience, you will no longer be eligible for your F, F1 and F2 level jobs, you will be deemed overqualified. In which case, the only level of jobs that you'll be looking for are your SHOs, that is your senior house officer, which is basically the, the non-training equivalent of your CT1 and CT2. Of course, you have to remember that sometimes some trust, you know, uh, do hire experienced uh, candidates, but with not enough surgical experience, in which case they might not qualify for an SHO level job, but in which case they will be placed on an F2 or an F3 level job, but basically they will be doing the same amount, same level of work as your SHO. There are some gray areas in between, but yes, that's how it works, okay? And if you wanna get into the training pathway, okay, if you wanna enter the training pathway, so suppose for example, let's take an example scenario. Uh, you are a post MBBS student and you have completed around two years of uh, you know, work in a surgery department. In which case, yes, you are no longer eligible for your F1 or F2 jobs. Of course, you can apply for SHO jobs, but the idea is you wanna get into core training. 
At that point, what happens is like, in addition to PLABS, again, just like the candidates here in the UK do it, you are required to complete this MSRA exams. Okay, so once you complete the MSRA exams, and once you've got your portfolio ready, you can start applying for your CT1 and CT2 level, CT level jobs. But keep in mind, if you're, this is only for your training pathway. If you want to join in a non-training pathway, that is your SHO or F2 or F3 level jobs, MSRA is not required. Okay. Of course, there's one yet another uh, slab is that if you have completed even a lot of surgical, uh, you know, surgical department work and you have completed MRCS as well, in which case you might be deemed overqualified even for a CT1 or CT2 level jobs as an SHO level jobs, in which case you might be thinking, yes, why don't I go for an ST3 level jobs? But bear in mind that, you know, unless you have demonstrated a good deal of surgical experience, which is not easy to demonstrate, especially if you do not have a degree uh, from other countries, uh, it is very difficult for you to, you know, land in an ST3 level jobs. Uh, I mean, I'm talking, of course, about the non-training pathways. Okay, so post MBBS, I would say keep your options limited to your after PLAP or at your SHO level jobs. ST3 is a little difficult considering that the amount of surgical you know, skills and experience might not be on par. So trust will be a little hesitant in offering you such jobs, right? So then comes post MS general surgery. So in this case, yes, your core training, your SHO level jobs are completely out of the picture. So in which case you have to join at an ST3 level, in which case, again, it becomes necessary to write MRCS or FRCS. Okay. And keep in mind, there is again a level of overtraining. So if you have more than five years of surgical experience, it is usually considered the cutoff for ST3 level jobs because uh, if you have more than five years experience, you are basically somewhere at the level of ST5, ST6, in which case it doesn't really make sense to be offered an ST3 level jobs. So this is for your non-training pathway. But of course, if you are planning for a training pathway, it is always better if you apply earlier because once that five years cutoff is crossed, it is very difficult for you, almost impossible for you to be considered for a training post. So at this level, okay, consider that you have completed your MRCS. In this way, you are eligible for ST3 level jobs, okay? So the jobs at this level usually are clinical fellow, trust school registrars, or specialty doctors, which comes under your SAS category, okay? So before we go into the SAS category, let me just complete the post-MCH pathways as well. So with post-MCH pathways, you definitely you know cross that five years uh, surgical experience in which case you are considered overqualified for ht3 plus level jobs so at this time either you can go for an sas grade that is your specialist associate specialist and your specialty doctors basically what it means so the criteria for sas level post is that you should have completed five years of surgical experience plus which includes two years in that particular specialty as well so these uh, so those level jobs are the ones you know are eligible for people who are post mch of course you can come without even writing frcs if you write frcs you will be considered even more senior because people here in the medical in the normal training pathway usually write frcs around st6 st7 so if you're confident enough you have completed your post mch you even completed your frcs and that's all is good you can come here and join at a senior clinical level fellow uh, job or an sas doctor's uh, job or there are various fellowships as well in which case you can go through that and when you're doing that you can go ahead and apply for this caesar route so that is basically called as a certificate for eligibility for specialist registration so this is again a consultant level degree of course what this degree says is you have not gone through the proper training pathway but you have shown competencies equivalent to a person who has gone through the training course so it is up to you uh, as a candidate to get all the evidence ready. So that is why CESAR pathway is said to be a little difficult, but of course there are talks in place to make it easier in the coming years. But you have to remember that for CESAR, the onus is on you. You have to go ahead, you have to get the surgery numbers, you have to get the competencies signed off. In this, like I mentioned earlier on, there are no supervisors here to guide you. So that is why CESAR is a little bit more challenging, but definitely not impossible. A lot of people here go through the CESAR pathway and get a consultant level jobs as well. Okay. 
So if you can see here, so this is the overview. So if you completed PLAB, you are eligible for F1 or F2 or even at the CT1 and CT2. If you're considering a training pathway, yes, you have to write your MSRA. If you've completed MRCS, you are eligible for ST3 level jobs. But if you're post MCH, you are even more qualified. So you will enter at this level, in which case an MRCS might be enough. Or if you want to be considered even more senior and you are on in your eyes or set on the CESAR pathway, you can even complete your FRCS as well before you go through and finish off to get a CESAR pathway route. Like I mentioned, of course, GMC is very essential, but there are certain routes for without GMC as well. So basically what they do is that you are, a, you are on a sponsored GMC. So this is something called as a medical training initiative that is your MTI pathway. So this is usually post, uh, this is for candidates who are usually at the level of post PLAB or have completed part one of their membership exams. In which case, you know, it is a two year course, you can apply for MTI level jobs. These are jobs that are again offered at the trust level. So you can apply for these jobs and with your CV and if you get selected, the trust will sponsor a GMC for you. But of course, this is aimed at candidates who are wanting to go back to the home country after spending time here. So basically, it is just to give international graduates an idea about how UK system is and an opportunity to be trained in the UK system. But MTI is basically fairly at the junior level. So you, the post you will usually get are at the level of your F2 and your SHO. There is a similar counterpart for higher senior level jobs, that is your international postgraduate deanery. So this is for specialty training post. So again, you go through an application process and if you're selected, uh, the deanery will uh, sponsor a GMC for you and put you in a training post for a two year duration. And again, the visa you get is usually for a two year so that you are expected to go back to your home country. And in both of these MTI, as well as your international postgraduate deanery, you do get a certificate at the end of it so that the US years of training are not considered, you know, gone to waste. So yes, so this are the various routes of entry into the UK. So if you have any doubt, please hit me up. Thank you very much.